Now let's uh, have a look at the decrease in the available energy when we transfer the heat through a finite temperature difference. Okay, so it is observed that whenever heat is transferred through a finite temperature difference, there is a decrease in the available energy that is transferred. Now, let's consider a reversible heat engine that is operating between T1 and T0. So the temperature difference is T1 and then T0, where T0 is the temperature of surroundings, the, min or the minimum possible heat rejection temperature. Okay, and the, temp and the cycle in consideration is this. And this, let us say, is a Carnot cycle. Alright, and uh, let us say this temperature is T1 and this temperature is T0. Now the processes are taking place as usual. You have heat addition over here. Let us say heat addition is Q1. Okay. Now the work output is here. So this is the expansion work. Right. Then you have heat rejection Q2 over here. And then you have some compression work, which is the work input. Okay. And if you break it down the difference in these two lines indicate a difference in entropy okay so if you write down this particular analysis and if you say that q1 that is the heat supplied this is equal to t1 into delta s isn't it and if you say q2 is equal to t0 into delta s Right. Then the work of expansion, or you can say, let's not take the expansion work only. Let's just take the maximum possible work output, which is equal to your available energy, which is equal to the difference between heat supplied and heat rejected. And this becomes equal to T1 minus T0 into delta S. Now, this is the case for a ideal cycle or for a Carnot cycle. Now let us assume that Q1 is transferred through a finite temperature difference from the reservoir at T1 to the engine which is absorbing the heat at T1 dash. Now we are, we are changing the scenario over here. Here the temperature of the reservoir is T1 and the temperature of the heat absorption of the engine is also same that is T1. Right. Now what we will do, we will increase the temperature of the reservoir to T1 and the temperature of heat absorption will reduce to let us say T1 dash. Okay. So let us draw a new diagram for this. So I will again draw that same TS plot. Okay. So this is S and this is T. Now First of all, let me draw that same Carnot cycle again, like this. Okay. Uh, where the arrows are like this, 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 this and this. All right. Now, now let's define some new temperatures. Right. So, you'll have some more values like this. So, let us say the heat absorption is now being done at T1. Or the temperature of the reservoir is T1 and the heat absorption is being done at T1 dash. Alright, so in this case, this is the uh, scenario we are changing. Alright, and we are assuming that T1 is higher than T1 dash. Now, the availability of Q1 as received by the engine at T1 dash it can be only found out by allowing the engine to operate reversibly in a cycle between T1 dash and T0. So let us say this is T0. So if you compare this with the earlier diagram, in this diagram, okay, the engine was operating between T1 and T0 because the reservoir temperature and the heat absorption temperature were both the same. But in this case, the reservoir temperature is this, but the heat absorption temperature is different. So we are 
assuming that the engine is operating between T1 dash and T0 and not between T1 and T0. Okay, so if you uh, look at this, let's uh, redraw it. So the cycle would change something like this. So if you have, so this is the original cycle, isn't it? So now let us say we are over here. So this is T1. Now from T1, we have some heat addition Q1. All right. And initially, let us say the entropy difference was delta S. Okay. So you can say that Q1 is equal to T1 into delta S. Okay. And if you plot this down, let us say this entropy difference is delta S dash. Okay. So if you look at this now, because the amount of heat that is being transferred is same at T1 and the amount of heat that is being absorbed at T1 dash is also same. So this is also Q1, which is at temperature D1 dash. All right. So now the value of Q1 can also be written as T1 dash into delta S dash. So it is one and the same thing. Now we know that T1 is greater than T1 dash. If this is the case, that is T1 is greater than T1 dash, then the values of entropies would be the other way around. Okay, because the value of Q1 is same. So if you take a, take a ratio of this, you would have T1 into delta S upon T1 dash into delta S dash. Now this is equal to 1 because this is all equal to Q1. Now if you take a, uh, you know, comparative ratio of both, both the expressions, you'll have T1 by T1 dash is equal to delta S dash upon delta S. Now we know that T1 upon T1 dash is greater than 1. So this renders delta S dash greater than delta S. So now, so now so we can see that the entropy change has increased. Okay. And now let's now focus at Q2. Now Q2 is happening over here at temperature T0. Okay. And let us say that is Q2 dash. Now initially Q2 was equal to T0 into delta S. And now Q2 dash would be equal to T0 into delta S dash. Now because now this is true that delta S dash is greater than T uh, delta S. Okay. This comparative study would say that Q2 dash is greater than Q2. You can do the same analysis of this ratio. Okay. So here we have the same heat input. So with the same heat input, okay, and at a lower temperature value, the entropy change was increased. But here at the same temperature uh, of heat rejection, okay, and at the comparison between this uh, entropy change, you would have higher heat rejection. Okay, so this is one case. So if I summarize a bit, if I summarize a bit for same Q1, which is being supplied at T1 and absorbed at T1 dash. All right. We know that Delta S dash is greater than Delta S. So we have a higher change in entropy as compared to earlier. And we know that we have a higher heat rejection as compared to the earlier case. 
and all this has happened because we are absorbing heat at a lower temperature as compared to at which it is being supplied right so if you find out w dash so w dash will be equal to q1 minus q2 dash now q1 i know is this value so which is t1 dash into delta s dash minus t dot into delta s dash all right so if you find out now the value of w which was in the original case where you had w is equal to q1 minus q2 now q1 i know is t1 into delta s okay and this is t naught minus delta s so we all know these values isn't it so now let's compare between the maximum work output okay so this is the available energy one let us say or dash and this is the available energy in the old case now if you do a comparison between these two expressions this expression and this expression okay q1 is same for both the values okay so for q2 dash being higher as compared to q2 okay so this is same and this is more and this is less this temp this difference would be less so you can say that w dash is less than w so the amount or you can say the available energy in the new case would be lower as compared to the available energy in the original case so here we prove that the available energy is lost due to the irreversible heat transfer through some finite temperature difference between the source and the engine okay so now if you go back to the you can say diagram okay and uh, look at this and find out that how much heat or how much available energy has been reduced so you can say that let's now find out the difference between the two available energy so this is what you'll get and this is w minus w dash and if you subtract these two terms you would get q2 dash minus q2 now we know that the value for q2 dash q2 dash is t not delta s dash t not into delta s dash minus t not into delta s so this becomes delta ae that is the change in the available energy or i can also write it down as decrease in available energy all right and this becomes equal to t not into delta s dash minus delta s so this is the relation to find out the decrease in available energy and how can we show this on the plot if you look at this okay this is t not and this value over here this value over here is delta s dash minus delta s so this much amount of portion that we get this can be regarded as the decrease in available energy all right so this is how uh we actually demonstrate this analysis that when you supply heat at a lower temperature as compared to the the the, the temperature of the reservoir the available energy will decrease that is the maximum work output from your cyclic heat engine would decrease okay so now why is this we can also say that the energy degrades each time it flows through a finite temperature difference okay so a very important analysis comes into picture that this is the temperature which is cause or this is the temperature difference that is causing the whole available energy part to deg degrade or decrease now if i increase this delta t if we increase the value between the temperature of reservoir and the temperature of heat absorption 
then the value of q2 dash would also increase so by increasing the temperature difference between the uh, reservoir temperature and the heat absorption temperature we increase the value of heat rejected there thereby in, you know greater will be the unavailable part of the energy supplied okay so the decrease in available energy would be higher if this temperature difference increases so we need to keep this almost zero so as to have minimum possible heat rejection and to have maximum possible available energy so i hope you understood this analysis of the decrease in available energy when the heat is transferred through a finite temperature difference and the relation to note down over here is this and the diagram to note down is this so i hope you understood it and made a note of the things thanks for watching and now let's move on to the next video where we talk about the available energy from a finite energy source